Very few chimeran animals have been domesticated. The known world is generally regarded as too dangerous, and the landscape of fear caused by habitats saturated with predators and large herbivores means that many animals that might otherwise be eligible are too skittish and aggressive to even be tamed, much less establish a tame population from which the process of domestication can begin. As is often the case, there are exceptions to this rule. The Free States and Codrath Peninsula are impoverished of many of these threats, and because of this, the fauna there often have a calmer disposition. Lions of Chimere are not the apex predators that they are on Earth. Over 200,000 years of adapting to be smaller hunters that must cache their kills in trees has dramatically altered their size and disposition. When the first children went extinct and ceased calling in Kajar, small lions were among the first predators to repopulate the land from the Arvela forest and nearby islands. It didn't take long for them to get larger and social once more, claiming the title of king they once held on Earth. The Age of Demons and Witches brought new threats, but lions remained the top predators amongst the beasts of Kajar. The Dark Ages after the Witch War concluded proved a great boon to them, and for thousands of years, Kajar was a scattering of countless small chieftains. 3,000 years ago, at the height of economic prosperity leading up to and including the Mercantile Age, the southwest coast of Kajar was controlled by a single powerful family called House Noru. This family was said to be skin changers that could take the form of lions. Whether or not this is true is a matter of historical debate, but they did have many lions in their palace menagerie. According to legend, a princess named Tomiran was fascinated with these lions and began breeding only the most tame individuals. She is said to have taken advice from Aknuk dog breeders to ensure the health of their population. The barren plague led to a period of isolation by the Noru and indeed most Chimeran peoples, and during this time of quarantine, Tomiran fully devoted herself to her lions. By the time of her death, the tradition was established, and the family proudly carried on bringing in tame lions from other menageries and heavily investing in the health and wellness of these beasts. In her lifetime, they were little more than novelties, but shortly thereafter they were used for guarding livestock and war, mostly for intimidation. House Nirotok of modern Chimere claims to be descended from House Noru. Regardless of the validity of these claims, they maintain the tradition of domesticating lions. Living in the same place, and keep the methods of training and breeding a guarded secret. They have held the largest territory of any Kadrath noble family, dominating the southwest, and their lions have been utilized for a wide range of modern uses. Over time, they developed a more adaptable diet, smaller size, and lower aggression. Changes in the skull and other anatomical features are consistent with other domesticated animals we have seen. There aren't breeds as we might recognize them, particularly because health of the population, and a higher priority than aesthetics thanks to the advice of the Akanu Hound breeders that Tomir and me consulted. Because of this, pelts and mane size vary greatly, making them look more like a collection of mutts even though they are distinguished by inherited behavioral traits. Since the jobs they are assigned to are largely determined by genetics, and things breeders are selecting for, they are often broken up into five breeds even though most of the breed markers are behavioral. Kajar is a highly fertile region, with crops and livestock being the beating heart of their economy. There are no giant dinosaurs, courtesy of culling of the first children, the celestial wall, and the cliffs that make up the majority of Kajar's coast. There are dangers, though, with threats to the cattle, sheep, pigs, llamas, and drakes that make up a majority of large livestock. All are popular targets of large pterosaurs, wild lions and leopards, and cockatrices. Most Codrath farmers rely on dogs to defend their livestock. In Nerotan lands, this job is undertaken by lions. Guardian lions are chosen by breeders as the largest and most aggressive of the population. Defending herds rather than hunting them is one of the first traits bred out of these lions so all could still be used for the task, but brawlers are preferred. 
They are still smaller and more docile than wild lions since they have been bred to be tame, but they tend to be stockier, more muscular, and better fed than their wild counterparts, and their directus and herd defense is often enough to deter wild predators looking for an easy meal. They will outright kill cockatrices and leopards when found. Often they are outfitted with gambesons to protect their throats and chests in these fights. If a lion shows traits like good endurance and high energy, they are often trained for hunting and war. Hunters are usually more gracile, and lionesses make up a majority of hunters, while most war lions are male. Since both favor obedience and stealth over aggression selected for amongst herd defenders, most male war and hunting lions have greatly reduced manes or lack them entirely. When hunting, dogs are usually used to draw prey to the lion, which either makes the kill or restrains it so the hunter can finish the job. In war, lions are usually not employed in vanguards. They are simply too valuable to risk in an open contest. As scouting companions, however, war lions truly shine. Nerotan rangers with a lion companion often scout ahead and patrol the borders. Lions are well trained to restrain or kill on command. Their resonant roar is also extremely useful in intimidating troops and their beasts. Many conflicts during the Warring Lords period were noted for lions breaking up cavalry charges or dispersing supply chains. Enemies often say Nerotan soldiers can turn themselves into lions or that lions break apart the front lines, but in truth, war lions are much better used in niche application, but the fear and propaganda is undeniably useful in breaking enemy morale. The Nerotans are now part of the Kajarath Republic, but their surrender was mostly due to economic pressures and losing their navy along the coast, as they famously won every land engagement they partook in. If a lion shows more territorial instincts, they are employed as house and bodyguards. These cats bond with a person or family. Like war lions, they are often trained to kill, but only upon certain command, and usually used for intimidation. If they have a calmer temperament, they might even join nobles on diplomatic campaigns. Neurotan senators are usually accompanied by a few guard lions. Although before the ladies of House Nirotak were married to vassal lords within Nirotan lands, the four centuries since the Republic was established, more ladies are marrying throughout Qajar and even internationally. Because of this, bodyguard lions are the beasts most often encountered by outsiders. A product of breeding apex predators to not attack livestock and people unless commanded to means that a lot of them show no aggression or killer instincts whatsoever. These lions, when deemed unsuitable for the jobs they were bred for, enjoy the life of a cherished pet. Nerotan nobles often have a few house lions that eat with them at the table and are spoiled, affectionate pets. Throughout Nerotan lands, domesticated lions are widespread and beloved companions, with their population in the thousands. Whether pets or guards, or allies in hunting and war, Lions define Nerotan lands and are an exciting example of the ways in which the context of Chimere can create something completely different than on Earth. <sighs> Cheers to Grizat for sponsoring this episode. It was super exciting to explore. Huge shout out to my patrons. Your continued support makes all of this possible. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Helps put my videos on new feeds. Thank you all so much, and have a wonderful day. Cheers, folks!
Oh, <laughs> 